Tune into this week's Xamarin Show where I have my good friend Maddie on giving us an in-depth analysis and details about XAML Hot Reload for Xamarin Forms. So tune in. Welcome back everyone to the Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and today my favorite person in the entire world, Maddie Legere is here. How's it going, Maddie? Good, James. How are you? Uh, I am absolutely fantastic as always. Now this is your second time on my the... second time, but first time in person. Well, welcome to beautiful Redmond, Washington, Great. Building 25, the home of Microsoft Studios, Developer Studios, Channel 9. Channel 9. Cameron, Golnaz, K Diggity, everybody's here for a good time. Now, who are you? Maddie, so I know, but not everyone knows. That's a great question. So I am a program manager and I work on tooling, specifically Xamarin Forms tooling. So things like Hot Reload, which we'll be talking about shortly, and all your XAML tools, anything that helps make your life easier when you're working with Xamarin Forms. Beautiful. Now I wanted to have you come on, not only because you're finally here in person, but also because you are the program manager of XAML Hot Reload for Xamarin Forms. Yes. Now I had Pierce on earlier because he was in town and he'd worked on, on it and we talked about at a high level what XAML Hot Reload is and how it worked and for the public preview. But now we sort of progress along and I wanted to have you on to do a deeper dive, sort of you know, deeper than just the basics, you know what I right. mean? And all the other tooling that's built in because Pierce only got to show off some cool things and we'll link to that video in the show notes. But I wanted to have you on to talk about awesome stuff. So what type of stuff are you gonna talk about? Great question. Well, I have two laptops, flew them both through TSA. Beautiful. I'm that person in security. I have a phone, I have an emulator, and I have a bunch of demos. So we'll go through the whole hot reload story. I'm excited. Let's do it. Let's do it. So this is Visual Studio 2019 16.3, just launched, super exciting, and hot reload is built in, but it's off by default. So you can go into options, Xamarin hot reload, Check it on, enable Xamarin Hot Reload. So it's still on preview today, you just check a checkbox, boom, good to go. Right, it's awesome. a preview feature. So we want you to try it out and use it and send us all your great feedback. And then let's go into my recent solution. I'll open up this Hot Reload project. It's just a blank app, but it's actually a little outdated. So Hot Reload is nice enough to tell me the version of Xamarin Forms it requires. So it's 4.1. Well, that's so great. I so this is referencing an older version. Yep. You know, it happens to me all the time. I do like to update every Friday, but you know, sometimes Ooh, I miss one. Every Friday. So that's cool. I just updated it for you. Just updates it for me. Wow. So then all I have to do to start using Hot Reload is hit play. So let me get this straight, Maddie. You open up your project, mm -hmm. turn on Hot Reload, mm -hmm. and then it just works. Yeah. So what Hot Reload is, yeah. is the ability to change your XAML and then hit save, and then the emulator or your simulator or your device is gonna refresh the page and then show you what your new XAML looks like. Oh, beautiful. So it can be used for anything from a little tweak on a single page to you know, deleting a whole chunk of code if you feel like that. And it keeps your navigation and your view model. Mm. So if you're using MVVM and you're on a page and you change a bunch of stuff and you hit save, it'll keep you on that page. None of your data is gonna get lost or corrupted just puts you back in the state you were as if you just navigated to it. That's super nice because if I'm in design time mode, in my mind, I don't really have the data like to actually see it. So I can actually see it, tweak it, and update it immediately. Right. Very cool. Nice. All right, we'll let it finish compile here. There we go. Awesome. So you can see down at the bottom, as all these things fly by, Hot Reload initializes, and then it's going to say, Hot Reload connected and ready. All right, so that's how you know, basically. That's hot how reload. you know. And then on the bottom left, I also see Hot Reload connected. Boom, yes. good to go. Hot cool. Reload connected. Nice. So I'm going to start with just making a list view, and I'm a little bit too lazy to do a full view model binding everything right now, but I will just make an item source. And if you don't know this trick, it's actually really nice. You can just build items into your app. Oh. into your XAML. You don't have to wire it up or pull it from anywhere. So if you're trying so. to do, like design some stuff basically, like, oh, I don't have my view models yet, I don't have all this stuff, I yep. just want to put it in there. Very cool. So I'm just making sure that the type knows it's 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 a string. So x type x string. Oh yes, this is one of those tricky uh, things to do. I always get a, I always go to the documentation. Yes. Like we have one on design time data and I'm you like, copy okay, let me, paste it. I copy yeah. and paste it in, yeah. <laughs> So then I'm just going to make a few items here. So I'll make a string, uh, close that tag, first item, exclamation points. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, and this is cool, too, because you're just making a list of strings, which is built in. But if you did have a model, let's say you had a bunch of monkeys or something, then you could create those items, too. So I could. But this is file blank, basically, right? Exactly. Cool. Haven't done anything fancy except for update my Xamarin Forms version. Nice. So I'll, I'll hit save here. Okay. And see what happens. So oh. now Hot Reload's oh. coming in. Boom. Uh-oh. But something has happened. What's going yes, on? Yes, I have some squigglies. So Hot Reload is nice enough when it can't figure out what I'm trying to do, oh. it tells me. Oh, cool. Hey, sorry, I couldn't do that. You can see it doesn't try to do anything here. It just acts like the list view is there and empty. Mm. So let me hover over this error. Love, love you, IntelliSense. Type string. Oh, it's capital S. Capital uh, S. Ah, yeah, you see I have the X string over there. Beautiful. So I'll fix that. I'll hit save. Mm. Give it a sec. Squigglies go away. There's my hot reload. Very right cool. Right there. There's my list view. Awesome. So it even works if I wanted to go ahead and like add an item template. So I'll make my data template. Close that. Uh, we'll make a view cell, and then let's do let's do a frame, framey okay. frame, and a label, and we'll just say binding dot. So this is a nice thing if you're using this method with the arrays. You can just bind to itself, bind to the actual item source in this list view. Oh, gotcha. That's all you have to do. Okay. I'll make a background color on the frame. Okay, cool. Yeah, that way it really stand out. Purple. Yeah. Purple. Yeah. And Good I'll color. put some margins just for funsies. Ten. Let's do that. Hit save. So can you do as little or as much Ooh. change? Like, can you just change one property, or do you have to do a bunch of properties? No, you can just do one. You can okay. do little tweaks. Like, I can't see anything. Oh, you know what I have to do? Mm. Is I have to make my list view have uneven rows. Ah, okay. See, this the, is the beauty of Hot Reload is that I would have to literally like stop, redeploy, rebuild, hit play, look at it, and now you can see. I'll make that text a little bit nicer so you can actually read it. Text color. I love IntelliCode too. I don't know if you just saw it pop up with the first thing as text color. Just writes your code for you. Amazing. Cool, and that's nice because it. This is actually reloading the items inside of the list view. It is. is cool. Very yeah. Cool. So all these nested things, which is pretty cool. And it works with your custom controls. It works with your third-party controls if you pull them in from one of our amazing vendors. Uh, you can edit those. You can edit your app that's using those. You mm. can edit them on their own page, and Hot Reload is smart enough to update them. So it's pretty cool. Now, you're on just your Android emulator on the PC. I am. What if I was to use other, like, can I do it on, what can I do it on? Oh, yes. So you can do it on Visual Studio 2019 16.3 for Windows, Visual Studio 2019 8.3 for okay. Mac. It's in there. I'll show you how to turn that on as well. And emulators, simulators, or a physical device. And remoted iOS simulators, too? Remoted iOS simulators, too. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Lovely. So let's flip over to the Mac. We'll okay. take a look at how it looks in VS Mac over here. All right, here I am inside of Visual Studio for Mac. I'm in your monkey's app. Okay, by the this way. is my pro my project, existing project. Yes. Okay. So not super complicated, but it is a list view. You pull all your monkeys in from the interwebs, which is pretty cool. All your where are they? Monkey helper. Mm -hmm. Yes, just some nice URLs you're gonna pull in. So I'm gonna hit play, and debug it onto my simulator. Oh. Oh, you have your linker on. That's interesting. Uh -oh. I probably shouldn't have that. It's gonna take longer to build. That's weird. Okay, so. Why is this telling me this, 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 what's going on here? Yeah, so Hot Reload doesn't want your linker to be on because Hot Reload's only meant for debug builds, okay. right? So you're not supposed to have your linker on. Also, if you're on your phone, which I am not, but if you are, you want to go into these additional mtouch arguments right here and do dash dash interpreter. Okay. So that is because Hot Reload is trying to inject your new code into your code as it's running. Gotcha. And iPhones don't like it when you do that. So for the simulator, it's fine. For the phone, you want to go ahead and do that. And we can link to the blog about the interpreter if you're interested in learning more. Yeah, so that makes sense because the iPhone simulator builds are completely different from the compilation steps that the iPhone has to go through. Okay, so first things first is we learned that you have to say don't link for any project because right. you're in debug and you don't want to link anyways. That would be silly to do that unless you're debugging the linker. Right. And then if you're going to just an iOS device, correct, that's when you have to do the interpreter. Exactly. Android. Android, you don't need to do any of it. You can have link SDK only mm. for Android because their rules are a little bit different with uh -huh. how we link. But just to be safe, don't link. It's the best way to go. Your yeah. builds are going to be the fastest that way, so yeah. I don't see why not. Gotcha. And then you can always go in when you're getting ready to actually like release it to the store, turn on the linker and debug it that way. Perfect. So you compiled it up and boom, it's running again. Boom, it's running. Cool. So it's just a list of monkeys. 
I'll scroll around. And the first thing I'm going to do, well, what you did in this app, which was pretty smart, is you did your view model in the code behind. Mm -hmm. So that's where you set your binding context for this page. So that means my binding context is not going to get refreshed every time I save this file. Oh, because I could have put it in the XAML, but then the XAML is getting reloaded. So right. it'd be new every time. Yep. Uh, so that would be bad because if you're grabbing, here I just have a bunch of data, but if I'm grabbing a bunch of things from the internet, it's going to have to reload it every time. Every single time. Got yep. It. And you won't have to do that here, which is nice because I'm just going to switch the location and the name here. It's pretty quick. You see all the monkey pics mm. pop back up, and then the location and name have swapped over. And I can edit things like your custom control here, the circle image, which is one of my faves. Change my border color to purple. Oh, okay. So any any control anything. Any matter. control anything. Yep. Oh, okay. So yeah, because that control circle image, it's in a whole different namespace. It's not Xamarin Forms. I, I built it. No, that. it's pulled in through NuGet. Ah. So somewhere in those dependencies. And then if I click into like a page, like the, the detail page, right? I can go into this monkey detail page. Ooh. Double click. And I'll switch this, monkey.location, monkey.name, hit save. Oh. Swaps right there. So it keeps my navigation state. It doesn't lose what item I've clicked on, which yeah. is pretty good. So it's not like it's like, oh, now I don't know what monkey you're referring to. Let's oh, switch that. That's cool. And then you could keep those border colors consistent and make that purple too, right? Oh, absolutely. Like as your revenue, you can make them really big, like 15. I don't know, Ooh. maybe 15 would be crazy. So Very something cool. else that's nice is that if I like misspell a color here and uh -huh. hit save, it knows. It's oh, like, that, hey, you misspelled that. That root edit. That root edit. Ah, so, so can't convert purple with no E. But the rest of the page still loaded fine. But the rest of the page still loaded fine. Uh -huh. So it just takes off the border Got because it. it doesn't know what to do with that attribute. So it just says, we're going to pretend it's the default. Uh, and it goes away when you fix it. And it goes away when you fix it. Let me ask you a question, Maddie. Yes. Let's say I accidentally mistype purple. Uh oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. What happens if I start to change other things on this page? Like, will that Great continue question. to work or what? It will continue to work. Uh -huh. So if I wanted to change this back to name and this back to location, this is called resilient reloading. Uh -huh. So even in the presence of a root edit, you're allowed to edit around it. Uh -huh. Oh, and it, that's nice because I'd expect it just to crash, but it doesn't crash. Right. So very cool. And if you're trying to wire things up to like a click handler that doesn't exist yet, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, ah, oh, that's what I'm going to name it, but I don't feel like stopping and writing up the click handler in C sharp and redeploying. Mm -hmm. You can just leave it and come back to it. Oh, very cool. So your debug session doesn't have to end right away. Which that's is pretty nice. Very cool. And I like that. Yeah, it's just right there. My baboon's there. My yep. contacts. I didn't change anything. Yep. Easy peasy. Cool. And it works with all the different pages. Like if I wanted to go and like do a different monkey, that works too. So that's not all. Okay. What else? We also have it working fantastically with Shell. Oh, okay. Like I mentioned at the beginning. Oh, okay. So Shell, if people don't know, is sort of a new way of doing, I like to call it like a, a way of laying out your navigation and structure of your application. So right. instead of stringing things along, Shell puts it all in a shell. In one shell. <laughs> in one shell. Where you can edit it all mm. in one file. In one file. Which is beautiful. So yeah. all your tabs and everything. So let's go ahead and run this one. Okay, cool. So, so what, yeah, what this, is this is just the file new shell app. Nothing fancy here. Uh, you can see, though, I did pull out some of my resources on my about page. I pulled them out of the about page. I put them in app.xaml. Oh, OK. The reason for that is because if I go to the about page, and I change this resource out here to purple, my favorite. Apparently, your favorite. It's going to bump me back to the beginning because I'm reloading from the very top of the app. But if I go back into that about page, my merged resource dictionary works totally fine. Oh, I see. So we, well, you, I didn't do anything. I just stood here in general. But you made an edit to the app. To the app. Hit save. And it's like, I'm going to reload your app. Yeah, app.xaml. App.xaml. So right. my resource dictionaries. Totally work. Oh, cool. And then if I go into browse, I can still click around and everything. So app shell.xaml is where the shell magic happens. Got it. So I'll go ahead, I'll change this uh, this resource right here. Uh, let's do pink. Okay, I'll change I was, it up. I was going to say purple. Purple? <laughs> no, pink is fine. Hit save. <laughs> My favorite color. There purple. you go. Oh, it's a nice light pink. I'm going to change it to fuchsia. Uh oh. I don't oh, think great. I can spell fuchsia. <gasps> let's see how resilient no. it is. No. It knew. It knew I was wrong. <laughs> How That's do you good. even spell fuchsia? S C H. Perfect. There we go. Nice. Root edits coming in, 
to help you with all your typos. Yes. That's going to be me. It's just going to be yeah. all day hot reload being like, nah, James, you don't know how to spell. Yep. Nice. And it works. I mean, it's shell, right? Yeah. So my whole app now has this nice pink outside. Beautiful. Uh, and I can go and like change the name of this tab or like add a tab. So I'll do about to about me with a lot of exclamation points. Perfect. Save. Apple will definitely approve that. Yep, totally. And then I'll like copy paste this, copy paste, save. Pops right yeah. up. That's kind of cool because I don't you even have that file in there yet or that page in there yet, and you're just adding no. new pages and navigating around. Yeah, and Shell just knows because I told it to go to my about page. So it just goes right there. So now I have two because everyone wants to learn more about me. That's kind of nice because I always thought learning shell is a little bit tricky because it's it's new. So one, it's going to be trickier. It's a new API. Right. But when you're reading through the docs, you're like, oh, what if I want flyout? What if I want this? What if I want tabs on the bottom? So you, this kind of really helps out a lot without having really to stop does. and recompile. And it's easy to read. Tab yeah. bar, tab. Yeah. I know what that means. Yeah. And then I can go and like, you know, add something, my new item page, and then I'll go into mm. my new items page, XAML. And I'll add a background color to this editor Ooh. with the new Mac XAML editor that has completions for this, Beautiful. which is amazing. I'll make it blue-violet. Okay. Somewhere in between purple oh, okay. and blue, you know? Hit save. There you go. Oh, nice. Okay, so this was on a modal page too, so it really doesn't matter. Right. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in some cases, right, like Hot Reload's going to reload the page. Yeah. So if it's reloading something like app.xaml, it can't reload just that page because that page is your whole app. Yeah. So there are definitely some situations where it's going to bump you back. Oh, I see. Gotcha. But especially, I mean, if you're using MVVM or if you're using an MVVM framework, we've tested with most of the popular ones. We made sure it works with your prisms and your MVVM cross and all that. Oh, very cool. So, yeah, it will work really well. Beautiful, Maddie. I love it. So I love it. I've, I've already been using it a lot. I can't can't lie, but I learned a lot new already. Just things Great. that I'm like, oh, why did do that or why did do this? It's very cool. Yeah. So I got to do turn it on. Yep. Start using it. Start using it. How do people get feedback? Great question. Yes. Help report a problem. Okay. Or help send feedback okay. on Mac. In Windows, they hide them under help send feedback okay. report a problem. Okay, perfect. So report a problem if you have a problem. Is there? Suggest good? feature. Suggest feature. That's what it's called, not send feature. Gotcha. Suggest fe feature is what that little final option is. Very cool. And people have already been reporting. We have a bunch of feature requests in there. So definitely go in, search developer community, upvote them, because cool. that's how we prioritize them. Awesome. Maddie, fantastic. Thank you so much Thank for uh, you. coming on. Yeah. And of course, you can learn more about XAML Hot Reload by going to aka.ms slash XAML Hot Reload to learn more. Maddie, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. In person. In person. Yes. <laughs> Start reloading today. Like I said, go to ak.ms slash XAML Hot Reload. And thank you so much for watching this episode of The Xamarin Show. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Ding. Become part of the notification squad. So until next time, I'm James. This is The Xamarin Show. Thanks for watching. Hey, James here. Just wanted to check in and thank you for watching this video. Now do all the things that you know you want to do, such as like, subscribe, and ding that notification bell. Become part of the notification squad. While you're here, check out all these awesome videos that I've already recorded. Click on that thing. Click it. Watch it. Do it. <laughs>